Good evening, everyone. How's it going out there? Welcome back here to a Monday evening. It is 9.25 p.m. local time here in California. October 20th, 2025 is the date. Latest quake uh, shows a 5.0 outside of Port Morrisby there. Papua New Guinea region, right along that plate boundary. It's been pretty active here in the last, oh, technically the last seven days or so. A lot of activity stirring up here. But it is in a zone that, uh, yeah, well, always get large earthquake activity nothing new for that region uh, take a look here at the earthquake 3d globe here last 24 hours of data look at this super deep earthquake here back behind uh, well that's into the nankai trough that's a 5.1 super deep quake i believe that got upgraded here uh, from a smaller magnitude, if I recall. I don't think it was that big when I put out that little post there earlier on my social media platform. Had I known that, uh, this being a large magnitude like that, I probably would have done an update. I'm just now seeing this. Uh, I knew it was a super deep earthquake there into the subduction zone, but I didn't know it was that big uh, for a 5.1. Now, the important significance of this uh, is the location here underneath this region we're talking about 223 miles deep for that super uh, not a big earthquake but moderate earthquake and its location is uh, of concern because that has to do with the nankai trough here which is a major subduction zone there's three separate se or five segments here and uh, they can rupture at the same time they can rupture in pairs and there's a uh, little concern here because back when the last ruptures occurred back in 1942 and 44 I believe were the years uh, we've seen A and B rupture and C and D but E over here never did rupture uh, so more than likely the next time it does go uh, it'd, it'd take its entirety out here and basically rupture is a full event we've compared this to times past there and similar uh, circumstances there when certain sections didn't rupture it always came up uh, following a full rupture here during the next event so that's a super deep earthquake I don't uh, I don't see any adjustment here following that quake yet but obviously that's a super deep one into the subduction zone there uh, and again I, I believe that's underneath well it's underneath this area but more than likely the Nankai trough subduction zone here not the Japan trench that's much further over here uh, Nankai Trough. Watch that closely. This is a region that got a mega quake warning put out for it um, last year because of a swarm happening all around it. Uh, we've seen a similar swarm earlier this year as well. No big earthquake activity, but it has the potential uh, to produce earthquakes in the upper eight range. Uh, so watch that very closely there. Uh, some further adjustment up along the Curl Cam Chatka Trench. Look at that five-pointer. That's not in a good zone here. Uh, and I say that because most of the activity here, uh, you know, following that 8.8, .8, it uh, ruptured uh, about a 500-kilometer-long 500 500 portion here of the subduction zone. Probably, uh, if you look here, you can see it for the most part within this area. That's probably about the correct length here, about 500 kilometers if you look at the scale. But there's certain sections down here, and, and right here where this five-pointer struck today, uh, that is, uh, has built up a lot of strain here. There's not a lot of uh, mega quake activity here recently. So that could be a concern here that we I mean, could further see another big earthquake on the Curl Cam Chatka Trench. That's just realistically speaking. It's happened before, and... Um, you know, deep earthquake there. This one is fairly shallow. But, uh, man, I guess we just got to watch it and see how it plays out here. I do think we have potential to see, you know, big earthquake activity around the Nankai Trough. I'm not really too concerned with the Japan Trench right now because that was 2011 when we last had the 9.1. Uh, I don't believe there's enough strain there for another 9-pointer. It's realistically, that's not... Not going to happen, I don't think. But the Crow Camp Chaka Trench, yes, that does have uh, some potential and uh, possibly soon. So, definitely some adjustment going on up here across the northern area of the Pacific Plate, including a five pointer near Dak, Alaska, along the Aleutian Trench. Uh, all that newer activity from, from uh, well, since the update this morning. Also, some newer activity, as I noted there, across Papua New Guinea. 
bunch of deep earthquake activity here around the Indonesia area. Look at all these circles or these rings here raised off the globe. That's indicating some super deep earthquake activity in the region. And uh, it's a pretty good cluster of deep, deep earthquake activity. Watch for further larger scale movement out here. Uh, those deep quakes can definitely uh, add quite a bit of strain up along the uh, subduction zones. Uh, New Zealand, couple threes. Threes. It's always threes down here. It, I mean, occasionally it's bigger. I guess that's better than, uh, you know, a big mega quake. But uh, just know that uh, these three pointers are really doing nothing in terms of relieving any strain out here across the area. Just a sign that things are increasing in pressure out there across New Zealand. Nothing big right now, but uh, it does have some potential. There's an earthquake back prior to the subduction zone up in Alaska uh, from earlier today. I like to look at these because this is occurring right prior to the subduction zone, right, right before the Pacific plate dives underneath the North American plate here. That's a major subduction zone. We're, we're, we've already seen a seven-pointer roughly in this area here, uh, back prior to the 8.8 .8 that struck there in the uh, Russia area back in July. Uh, but it's uh, it's interesting there to watch this because that could be telling us that things may be about ready to adjust here along this segment of the subduction zone, but quite possible. So that's another area we need to watch further up into Alaska. Yeah, there's a trail of stress quakes all the way up, you know, almost to, to the Fairbanks area. It looks like uh, a couple earthquakes there in the one range. Uh, Really nothing for that much above 2.5. Pacific Northwest, a handful of earthquakes there around Mount St. Helens. Let's, uh, let's go see what's going on, I guess, right? A couple earthquakes up there at the summit. So we'll uh, run over here and check out the um, Pacific Northwest Seismic Network that monitors slow slip events. And by the way, it's dropped off. Only 27 epicenters here. So we'll have to watch see what happens here where it uh, kicks back up at. Uh, Mount St. Helens here. Make sure the bells are off, which they are. And there's a couple of those earthquakes recorded in the last 24 hours. I do want to see uh, what the lot or the uh, recorded graphs look like here. Uh, when was that one earthquake? The latest earthquake here <coughs> looks to be a negative 0.4, fairly shallow at 1649. So we'd have to go back here the previous UTC time, 1649. Uh, is more than likely going to be this one right here. This little speck of an earthquake. Uh, but I'm wondering about what about all these, you know, these other spikes out here. Nothing big. I don't see anything major stirring up out there across Mount St. Helens for now. But occasionally we get these little earthquakes here um, in the background noise. These are very amplified readings, as you can see here. The, wave, the waves here um, kind of picking up maybe some of the smaller, deeper quakes there underneath Mount St. Helens. Nothing big. No no further escalation going on, but we're still seeing earthquake activity. Uh, up at Mount Rainier, we'll give a quick glance here as well. And, uh, yeah, there's still some earthquake activity out there. As uh, one can plainly see, nothing big, but still some earthquake activity out there. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Uh, Northern California, Really nothing new to report out here across the area. Well, I take that back. We do have a 2.7 here earlier this evening. That is down towards the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. 6.2 miles deep there. Uh, but really nothing uh, nothing big going on there for Northern California for now. The Bay Area, one earthquake on the San Andreas Fault earlier this evening as well. A little small microquake, a little 1.6. Nothing big going on across the Bay Area. A couple other earthquakes there around the Calaveras Fault Zone. Uh, Southern California, very spotty. Not a whole lot happening down here in the southern portion of the state. Just a couple small microquakes out there today. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, as you can see, a handful of smaller quakes out there in the region. We'll uh, double check this here, see what we have for the Yellowstone uh, seismograph stations up here. And we'll check this one out. Pretty quiet. Looks like maybe some wind that was out there earlier. Uh, but I don't see any earthquake activity across that one. Maybe a couple smaller ones out there as well. I believe that's some wind events uh, from earlier. 
Uh, let's see here. Are these just now coming in, these small microquakes? Uh, I guess they've been up on the map here. Just a handful of very small ones there. Uh, oil field still. Really nothing new out there. It's just a bunch of earthquakes out there in the oil fields. Uh, a little earthquake there from uh, last night out in the New Madrid seismic zone. And it looks like outside of New York here, got a little 1.6 in the New Jersey region. Nothing big going on there for now. Five-pointer out to, uh, away from the plate boundary in the Dominican Republic area earlier this afternoon, it looks like. Uh, it's a region that's... Um, Seen some large activity here, not recently, but it can get pretty big up here across that area. A handful of other quakes out there around the Puerto Rico region. Uh, I don't see it showing up here on the USGS map, though, surprisingly. There's a lot of newer quake activity over here. Uh, 3.5 and a 4.2, but uh, USGS not picking up on that. Normally they do. They'll show some of the quake activity over here, but not uh, this time. South America pretty quiet. Another earthquake out there in that uh, in that odd zone, 4.4, way south here in the Drake's Passage region. <coughs> Just kind of a an odd deal out here. Not associated with the fracture boundaries here, away from the, uh, any plate boundary. Just big earthquake activity underneath this uh, ocean basin here. Seen. Uh, two seven pointers so far this year the 7.6 is going to be the largest uh, earlier a couple few months back there we had a seven pointer as well i think it was a 7.3 so these are unusually large earthquakes in an area that his history historically has not seen uh, really much of anything so some interesting activity brewing up around that area uh hawaii what do we got going on out here across the southeast rift zone 2.0 and also a little 2.2 back to back let's go see what's going on here across the big island of hawaii you know we're waiting on uh, what episode number i think what 36 is coming up if i recall it's just been a rinse and repeat cycle there since the end of december or the middle of december of last year uh, but i don't know you know how much longer that's going to continue possibly could continue for a little while but Going up, that's the uh, inflation going on there, and of course will lead to another eruption some days down the road. I don't see any change there in the magma flow. As uh, far as the earthquake activity here recently, uh, that's going to be down here a little bit, I think. Yeah, nothing big. I don't see any increasing movement, but there is a couple earthquakes there this evening. Uh, down here across this area of Hawaii, nothing, uh, nothing new. This is a pretty shallow earthquake up here outside of the uh, northwest of Mauna Kea. Surface quake, little 1.4. Let's see what else we got going on out here. Uh, the Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Mediterranean region earlier today. This thing was rock and rolling, lighting up with earthquakes all over the place. And there's definitely been a number of fours out here earlier. Uh, as far as any newer activity goes, it looks like around the Turkey area. Got some twos and threes out there. Um, but aside from that, it looks like it may be taking a little little break there for, for uh, earthquake activity. Man, look at the... So now we got two, three, four. Got four deep earthquakes out here. Nankai Trough Zone. And a bunch down here across Indonesia. Definitely keep an eye here across this region for some larger movement. Uh, it's just looking looking uh, like we should see something here. Uh, and just because, you know, the larger earthquake activity uh, in the deeper areas will further stress and strain these locked subduction zones. So pretty much anywhere within this zone here we could see some uh, larger activity. Uh, let's see, anything else going on for the earthquake world? I think that's about it for earthquakes. Space weather activity, well, there we go, as expected, down into the B-flare category. 
Uh, really not a whole lot going on here in the sun right now. Some of those active areas um, out here on the southeastern limb of the sun, well, there's numerous ones, but it uh, looks like maybe these are starting to fade away here. Not a whole lot uh, of complexity uh, within those magnetic cores there. Looks like maybe a new one popping up here, but uh, yeah, I'm going to probably drop my M flare threat there from my, I think I have it about 40% or so. Uh, I think this is the uh, realistic probabilities, 25% chance there for M flare, X flare. Uh, I'll probably drop mine down to about 1% because these are really starting to look weak. No major auroras there in the forecast. Pretty quiet there across the aurora and the uh, geoma geomagnetic field currently. 0% um, illumination there on the moon. Good luck finding that tonight. I mean, I guess I guess you could look for an area where stars are blacked out, right? Let's see. But I think that's about it there for the sun. A little prominence eruption there off on the uh, northeastern limb. But uh, no major coronal holes. And uh, I guess we'll see what happens here. Pretty quiet there across the uh, severe weather board. Look at that. Not a whole lot in the forecast. Uh, let's check this out. See what we got. West coast there going to get some rain. Mainly up into the Pacific Northwest. Northern California will pick up some, it looks like. I'm, I'll take any at this point. Uh, but a pretty massive low pressure system there slamming into Oregon and Washington. That's going to bring some rain and higher elevation snow. That uh, will interact with the low over here later on early next week, bringing some, uh, some rain and maybe some severe weather threats there later. Again, next week, it looks like. But uh, rainfall for all. Look at that. Pretty massive band here, rain, right where they need it. Uh, and it uh, looks like maybe towards the end of October here, maybe even Halloween period, we might have some rain out there. We'll have to check back on that. That's a GFS model. Uh, the ECMWF model here is still showing roughly about the same thing. Uh, it's more in agreement. Less rain, Northern California, most of it slamming into the Pacific Northwest. But uh, that's a pretty decent amount right there. This one's a little bit more aggressive for the uh, uh, Saturday time period. Early evening Saturday. All right. Uh, anyway, folks, I think that's about it. Uh, seismograph stations there. One super small spiky earthquake on Anza. Let's go see what that is. I think that's that one earthquake I seen on the map here just a second ago. 2127 for a little point nine. Oops, I did not mean to do that. Uh, yeah, 2127, so that would match this time period here at 0427 UTC time. So a little small earthquake, nothing big going on there for now. All right. Uh, have a good night, everyone. We'll see you guys back out here for the Tuesday morning update. Just kind of quiet right now uh, as far as anything big going on. But as always, deep earthquake activity. Got to watch that. Could be looking at something here brewing overnight. Have a good one. We'll see you guys back out here in the morning.